My name is Simon and this is how to build a racing car. I think it's telling that when people hear I race cars or when people see these videos on YouTube, the reaction is almost always to say, I'd love to try that and not, how do I get into it? Racing and motorsports are not readily accessible and so it's not that surprising that most people who are interested in it as a sport simply don't even entertain the thought of getting involved themselves. I can relate to this, I certainly felt that way before I began. I thought I'd give some advice for those who are interested in getting involved. Now it's got to be said straight off the bat that although I think it's possible for almost anyone to get involved in motorsport, it is by no means easy. It requires time, effort and yes, money to get involved. You want to be pretty sure before you put all of that into getting into motorsport that you will actually enjoy it enough to justify it and I think the best way to do that is actually to just jump into a hire cart. Even today with all of the racing that I've done I still get a massive kick out of jumping behind the wheel of a hire cart. It's cheap and you can find indoor or outdoor hire cart places almost anywhere so there's really no excuse for not doing it if you're wanting to get into the sport. Now I'm not going to be able to give a one stop guide to every single series there is. Even between categories there's enough variation in the specifics that it would be almost impossible to do that. So what I'll do is cover Formula V which is what I'm racing at the moment since broadly speaking the basics are the same even between cars and carts. We will put together an example budget so that you can do the same and see if it's something that you can afford. You'll need to do your own research but hopefully after watching this you'll at least know what questions you should be asking. The first thing I should say is that motorsport is probably a lot more diverse and inclusive than you would realise. Categories like Formula 1 or WEC are really all that most people would be aware of as far as racing is concerned but club level motorsport couldn't really be any more different. Here at least the field contains a very broad range of drivers, from teams hoping to make their way to the upper categories to greyhead enthusiasts who just wanted something to, exciting to do on the weekends, to men, women from various backgrounds with varying skill levels and experience. The front end of the field is very competitive, but there is at least enough depth to the field that no matter what, you will probably have someone at a similar level to yourself to race against. It's worth getting yourself to the track to actually see the category you're interested in racing in, and to meet the drivers and competitors taking part. In my experience, people are very helpful if they know that you're new and want to get into the category. These people will be able to guide you when it comes to getting the right gear and judging the cars available to you. Speaking of the cars, most of the time you've got two options, either buying or leasing a car. There is also the third option of building a car, but you know, that sounds pretty crazy. Here in New South Wales you can lease a Formula V for between one and a half and two and a half grand per round, which is pretty reasonable for what you get. It'll be important to check what is and isn't included in the package so that you can get your budget right. What probably won't be included is crash damage, so get an idea on what the common damage components would cost to repair in an accident. Buying is where advice from those within that category will really help you. They can tell you if they know of anything for sale or give you tips on cars that you're interested in. When you're looking at a car, I'd recommend asking about the car's racing history, where it's placed, how long it's been since the engine was rebuilt, what spares you're getting with it, that sort of thing. Also find out what would be required to have it hit the track and actually compete. There's no use getting a bargain if you're just going to have to unload your wallet to get it race ready. The price for racing cars can be extremely variable. In Formula V, for instance, I've seen race winning cars sold for anywhere between 10 and 40 grand. You can also buy new, but honestly, if you're new to the sport, I'd recommend doing it as cheaply as you can and going second hand. If you do buy, be prepared to have some money set aside to maintain the car over the course of the year. You can keep the cost down by doing it yourself, or if you're not comfortable with that, then you can find someone else to look after it for you. Whether you lease or buy will depend on a few things. Leasing has the advantage that someone else takes care of the car and you can draw upon their knowledge to improve your driving and the car's setup. But of course, you've got less freedom to change the car to suit you. Buying gives you that freedom, but you need to own a transport vehicle and trailer and have a place to store it and be able to maintain it. If you're new, then leasing is a great way to learn the ropes. It's how I got my start. Next up is a race gear. Different categories and associations will have different requirements, but at a minimum, you would be required to have fireproof overalls, boots, socks, a balaclava, and gloves. You may also need fireproof underwear. How many layers the suit has to be will be dependent on the category, but ultimately it's for your protection. You'll also need a compliant helmet and most likely a head and neck protection system like a Hans device. For these I certainly wouldn't recommend going second hand, find a racewear shop and have them sort you out. You should be able to get everything you need here for between 2 and 3 grand but of course, like everything, the sky's the limit. Paperwork is an unavoidable part of the sport. You'll probably need to join a club, so see if there's one required to be eligible to score points in the category that you're racing in and join that one. Normally this is just a set yearly fee. Getting a license may require you to get a doctor's certificate uh, to state that you're fit and healthy enough to be behind the wheel of a racing car, 
but at least this shouldn't be an, an annual requirement. Depending on the license level, you may spend between maybe $1 and $500. A clubman circuit license here in Australia costs $310 and will allow you to compete in Formula B. One other thing to make sure of is that your vehicle has the paperwork required to compete, though it should have everything it needed when you bought it from the seller. Not much left, but there are some other things that we've left out of our budget so far, for example tyres. Ask around and see how many sets you should expect to go through in a year. In Formula V I'll have gone through two sets this year at around 750 a pop. You may also need to own a transponder, which is simply a beacon that tells the circuit when you cross the start finish line, petrol for the racing car plus other consumables such as oil, and of course you should include in your budget an allowance for travel, accommodation and food if the track you're competing at is far from home. You might also want to include the cost of some practice days, depending on the circuit this may cost a few hundred dollars a day. At this stage we've covered everything you should need to get behind the wheel. You should be prepared to spend a fair few practice days practicing before you're ready to race. You won't need to be at the pace of the front runners, but you will need to at least be able to drive consistent laps without spinning or losing control of the car. When you feel you're ready, you will probably also need to do an OLT, an observed license test. This is where an observer watches you drive around the track, ideally with other cars around you. They will be judging whether you are prepared enough to safely drive the car at a satisfactory speed. Driving slow here is not the goal, they want to see you drive fast enough that you're starting to push the limit while still maintaining control of your car. You should be able to organise to do this on a normal practice day. Once that's done though, you'll be ready to enter your first race. Anyway, I'm hoping that's been a good brief overview of how to get into the sport. It's not as accessible or as cheap as kicking a ball around a field, but it is, in my opinion, about one of the most complete and rewarding forms of competition that exists. So if you've been thinking about getting involved, hopefully I've been able to give you an idea about how to go about it. That's it for now, I'll be back to racing my own car in a couple of weeks.